In this video, I'm going to go over hash functions. The, the definition of a hash function is the following. A cryptographic hash function is one that takes an input of any length and gives an output of a fixed length. In other words, in general, what we had was too long, so we made it shorter via a hash function. You could make something longer, but um, in general, that would defeat the purpose of a hash function. The hash function would limit data for you to send, in many cases. The requirements for a hash function. The function must be computable fast. Uh, why is that? Because if the function is not computable fast, again, remember the idea is to make you be able to um, uh, process data faster to make it less data so that it goes faster so if the function itself is not fast you're defeating the purpose the second and third are it must be collision free and strongly collision free um, before we can understand what those are we have to understand what a collision is a collision is when the function of a message the hash function of a message hash of a message is equal to the hash of a different message. Um, so these are sometimes called M and M prime, where we put two different messages into the function and got the same output. So collision free is when we start out with our message M. And we want it to be computationally infeasible to find a collision. So we already have a message M, and what we want to do is try to find an M prime so that this is true. Um, if you really can't do that, it's called collision free. Now, you should also note that these things do happen in pretty much any hash function as far as I know, but um, they just need to happen in rare enough cases that um, it's not a problem. Because if there are so many messages that all go to the same hash, um, you could potentially be unsure about what the original message was. However, if it pretty much doesn't happen, if it rarely happens, it shouldn't be a problem. The other definition, strongly collision free, is when we do not have a message to start with. We don't have any M to start with. And we want it to be computationally infeasible to find any M and M prime where there is a collision where this is true. So remember, for collision free, we had a message M. Say somebody had already sent a message and somebody else wanted to find a match for that, wanted to find a different message that mapped to the same hash. Versus strongly collision free is when we're not starting out with anything. We can find any M and any M prime or any message and any other message where a collision occurs. So those are the three requirements for a hash function. We want these three things to occur as as well as possible. The faster it is, the better. The more collision free it is, the better. The more strongly collision free it is, the better. Because the less collisions happen, the better the function is. Now, as an example of when hash functions are used, um, hash functions are used in signing. Now, the idea for this is suppose Alice wants to send a signed message. Um, M comma M to the D, that's RSA, to Bob. The problem is that if the message M is long, then so is M to the D, the signature. So if it's long, it takes a lot of processing time, it's a lot of data to send, a lot of possible data to corrupt, etc. It's just not ideal. The solution? We use hash functions. 
recall that h of x is the function itself. Now for signing, before Alice signed the message m, so we took m and for our say that signing it means putting it to the power d, the decryption exponent, which is public, or excuse me, which is private to Alice. Now with hash functions, Alice signs the hash of the message. So what she sends is m, the message. Remember, it's not supposed to be um, hidden for signatures, comma, the signature of the hash. So right here you can see h of m, the hash of the function, and then we sign this thing, as you can see in this um, bright green, is the signature itself. So for RSA, we took the hash and treated the hash of the message like it was the message itself, like we would have done before if the hash was the message. So remember it was m to the d, so instead of m here, we just put the hash of m. So the hash of m to the d, and that is our signature. Now to verify, we need to note a couple things. The hash function, the m, the signature, um, and for RSA, the public encryption exponent, these things are all public. The hash function is accessible and the message transmitted is accessible, plus whatever data for the particular signature system. It would be different for LGAML, but in this case, it's um, RSA. So what Bob would do, Bob is the person receiving the message, he would compute the hash of the message. Remember he has the message and he has the hash function so he can compute hash of the message. He also wants to compute um, the signature to the power e. Now if you need to review how RSA signing works, there's a different video on that. However, the signature to the E is the hash to the D and then to the E. So this should equal H to the M, and that is the question. If so, if this is true, the signature is valid. So we compute the hash of the message and the signature to the E and find out if it is true, if so, it is valid. And you can use a similar process for other signature schemes.